Hello friends, welcome to YouTube channel Techie Jack. In this video series, we are going to learn about Hyper-V on Windows Server 2016. So let's see what we will be covering up. We will see how to install Hyper-V role. We will see the Hyper-V settings. Also we will see the Hyper-V virtual switch manager and then we will create a disk and all the main feature I'll explain to you so stay tuned with me and I'm sure after watching this video series you will be comfortable with Hyper-V so friends let's take a simple look to a uh, Hyper-V what is Hyper-V in the older days uh, when we have to install two operating system in a one computer at that time we have to use a dual boot process and nowadays we can run multiple virtual machines inside our host machine that means a uh, multiple operating system can be installed in a single physical box you can take it as a simple example like you have a physical hardware like you have a i7 processor you have a motherboard and you have a good hard drive space and memory that is a physical box and on that you have operating system like Windows Server 2016 and you have a role installed on Hyper-V on it which make it as a hypervisor and inside that you create a virtual machines the virtual machines are basically in a form of files and folder which take the resources of a physical machine to run you can take it as a simple and before moving further with the virtualization it is recommended that you use 64-bit hardware architecture and 64-bit operating system and also one more thing to notice is you have to enable Intel virtualization technology if you have a Intel motherboard like Intel original motherboard that means you have to go to the BIOS setup utility and you have to enable the virtualization technology if you not enable this you may install the role but you cannot install the virtual machines so you have to enable this to proceed further so let's go to the server and have a look and we'll try to install a Hyper-V role on our server okay now I am on a server 2016 and let's see the computer name is server-01 and it's joined as a domain with the techiejack.com let's have a look with the LAN card I have a three LAN card here and you should have a two LAN card at least to communicate with the virtual machine that means one will be reserved for uh, to communication with the virtual machine and another for the host machine this server dash zero one is will behave as a host machine and the machine we will create inside it that will be a virtual machine so let's install a Hyper-V role on this server I just removed this role earlier it was there so that's why it's showing Hyper-V here but it is not installed in this computer right now I say Hyper-V add features and we'll click on next 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 it's a pretty simple if I select here uh, if I select this box it will create a virtual LAN card for to communicate with that uh, right now I have three LAN card but two are disabled and one is enabled that means it will create a virtual uh, switch for that to communicate with the virtual machine and only a single switch will be created I'm not selecting it right now and we will create that manually later and now it says allow send a live migration this setting can be checked here uh, but we will do that later on this is a default path like your default location for your virtual hard disk files so if you want to change them you can change it this is location for the machine configuration files 
uh, by default I am just not changing them and let's install it it will take some time to install and I'll pause the video for a while and we'll resume it once we are back and restart it okay now we are restarted and let's open the server manager and let's go to the tools and Hyper-V Hyper-V manager is there I'll minimize this okay now we have the Hyper-V manager here that means our Hyper-V role has been installed successfully so here you see the Hyper-V manager that means connect to server that means if you want to connect another server you can just do that browse your server you can find the lo location of your server if you have another server as a member server because it, this is in a domain and see you can connect another server you can connect the multiple servers this server has two clients running on it and my this is empty one and if you want to connect some more server you can just do a connect and you can browse or you can type the computer name and you connect multiple servers in this Hyper-V manager so right now uh, let's go to the server one and let's see the settings of Hyper-V settings okay now we are in a Hyper-V settings here uh, you can see this is a default path when we install the Hyper-V role it was asked for it prompt for this path and I'll keep it default because whenever you will create the machine you can just change that path at that time this is a for a configuration files this is a default path for the configuration files this is something with a physical GPUs means it is a work with the VDI and if you need enhanced like you want a gaming experience or you want a higher resolution on your virtual machine you have to place a card like you have to place a physical card for the high resolution to make this enable so right now um, this is not enabled in this case uh, I don't have that uh, card uh, installed so if you want to use this feature you have to install like remote desktop virtualization host role service on your computer and you have to install that uh, hardware piece and after that it will get enabled so let's come to the new mess manning new mess manning means if you have a uh, example you have a 10 GB of RAM and you have given 2 GB to a virtual machine and sometime uh, the machine require more RAM like it requires 3 GB uh, what it will do it will uh, grab that 1 GB more if this new mesh spanning is checked here it will utilize that 1 gig more RAM and once the work is done it will release that RAM but if you have a multiple machines like 2 or 3 or 4 machines and they all require a maximum of RAM it can slow down the performance of your virtual machines the next option is a live migration you can here check the live migration option that means uh, at the um, same time how many machine you can you want to migrate you can increase the number or decrease the number it depends on the hardware capabilities and the network speed you have you can increase or decrease this you can see here to which IP it will respond the migration if you want uh, the particular IP you can just add the particular IP from that computer only it will take a migration right now you can see use any any available network for the live migration it will use uh, any available network for the live migration uh, make sure to use the feature live migration you should have a domain environment like computer should be joined as a member or you should have a domain environment it will not perform in a work group a work group environment and same goes with the storage like how many storage you simultaneously you want to migrate from one server to another server and now you have enhanced session mode 
policy that means how the resources you use from one uh, it's kind of a you have used a remote desktop you can use a copy paste you can uh, just move your things uh, around with the virtual uh, machine or a remote machine to your host machine so it is that and really I want this option because I want to deal with this option if you uncheck it you you may face a problem like uh, copy paste with the virtual machines and here's a replication uh, configuration if uh, this is something uh, advanced settings if you want uh, uh, this server to be as a replica you want to enable this and if you want it with a less security you want a less encryption you can go with the Kerberos uh, it will work with the port 80 and you have to enable the incoming port for 80 for the Hyper-V uh, let me show you that what you have to do is you have to go to the advanced settings and inbound rule and if I see the Hyper-V you see the Hyper-V replica HTTP listener on port 80 that is HTTP if I disable this or enable this rule it will now enable this rule also I want to enable the HTTPS if I have a certificate installed I have to deal with this rule that sorry this uh, rule and I have to enable this I have just enabled it let me close this and now the keyboard like you which like for example all tab function uh, what should the all tab function do this is something uh, not very advanced and the mouse like if you want the if sometime your mouse get stuck with the virtual machine inside the virtual machine uh, you can just press the control alt left arrow to release that it's again the advanced session mode and yes we need it with the guest operating system and reset checkbox for example if you have like uh, you are minimizing you are just closing something and you it's prompting for uh, like are you sure uh, and you have just made it like never ask me again so if you reset this uh, it will ask you the option again so I hope uh, we are good to go with this and the role is installed but let me see how it will communicate with my virtual machines because I don't have any LAN card here the LAN card of this computer will work as a switch for our virtual machines so let's go and create that one if I would have click on that checkbox if I would have done a tick mark on that checkbox uh, when we were installing it it would have create a new virtual switch here but I want to show you it uh, manually so that's why I didn't check it there so let me uh, we are on the server world. one because server 2 already have it installed so server 1 go we have see this uh, we have checked with the Hyper-V setting let's go to the ser virtual switch manager here if you see uh, there are three kind of uh, switches like external internal and private private means all the virtual machine I will create inside this host will communicate with themselves like they can ping themselves they can share the file with themselves but they cannot ping with my host machine and they cannot uh, transfer the data with the host machine so that is a private uh, LAN card you can say if uh, sorry let me cancel it let me open it once again virtual switch manager if you want to create a private you can just create a private switch you can type the name here and click on private and apply it will be applied so I will be creating a new virtual switch uh, with the external we have discussed the private and what is internal internal means that there will be one additional thing to a private that means all the machine all the virtual machine will communicate with themselves and also they will communicate with the host machine but they will not communicate with those machine which are present in our LAN environment so this is an internal switch and what is external means if I give a external switch 
I connect my virtual machine to external switch that means it will communicate with the all the other virtual machine which is holding a external switch configuration configuration and with my host machine as well and as well with the machines uh, present on my LAN local area network it will communicate with them as well if you have an application inside it yeah, your LAN you can access uh, that application on your LAN so let me quickly create a external switch I'll create it external switch I'll name it the same way you can create other switch as well I'll name it Cisco 192 series and here the external network uh, I have disabled all the two others that's why it's showing me uh, only one and if you see here I want to show you something it says a real tech PCI that means you have to see here uh, if you are getting multiple option here if you have a two or three LAN card you will get the multiple option through which you want to get connected I have given it a name as a 192 series and I will go with the real tech because other one other two are a D link so I have select with the real tech I want to connect it to the real tech as an external switch and we'll just click on apply it say it will give us a warning the network may disturb and I'll click on OK and now what it will do it will create a new virtual LAN card for my host machine but that LAN card will work as a switch for my virtual machine that means that same switch can be given to multiple virtual machines okay now you can see here the name I give it is Cisco 192 series earlier the same IP address was on the this LAN card and this is the IP address at 192.168.2.4 it was earlier on this one and if you see this is a virtual uh, Ethernet now and if you see the properties of this LAN card you will not see any IP you cannot click or if you want to click on status here and details you'll see nothing here so now this is performing as a dedicated uh, switch for our virtual machines that's why it is required to have a two LAN card now this is already converted to this and if I enable my another LAN card now I I can communicate with this LAN card with this host machine and my this LAN card is reserved for my virtual machines right now right now I'm not doing that uh, I, I just want to explain you about so that you can make it clear okay now let's see new virtual machine let's try to create a new virtual machine you can just click on a new virtual machine click on next you can just give it a name like VM1 and here it says the default location but I want to change it this time so I can put it inside my C drive and I'll create a folder that VM1 is a folder under which I want this virtual machine and we'll click on next and I'll to the generation 1 there is a difference between generation 1 and generation 2 that means if you have a 32 bit of operating system you have two you have only option with a generation 1 though the 64 bit uh, operating system can also be a generation 1 but uh, if you have a 32 bit it cannot be a generation 2 it has to be a generation 1 there are multiple other features like you have a UEFI base a BIOS feature like you don't have a BIOS feature like you have a firmware feature to boot that means a UEFI based firmware will boot your uh, generation 2 machine and you have a l older version of drivers like you have a PS2 mouse you have a PS2 keyboard in a, a generation 1 but in a generation 2 you have a you can say that you you have a virtual uh, drivers like virtual drivers for your uh, Ethernet you have virtual drivers for your keyboard virtual driver for 
your mouse uh, they, they are called as a synthetic drivers and also the some good feature are that uh, generation 2 uses a SCSI disk and you can boot with the SCSI disk with the generation 2 and you can use a feature of a secure boot with the generation 2 and you have to boot with the BIOS feature with the generation 1 and you can also edit the disk like you can uh, expand the space of your disk of a generation 2 machine while the machine is in a running state but if you uh, if you want to expand the disk in a generation 1 it will you will not get the option to uh, in, uh, expand the disk because it is not allowed on a generation 1 that is the basic difference between the generation 1 and generation 2 let's go with the generation 1 and click on next here you see the dynamic memory I will go with the 2048 or let's you can do with the like 28 you can give it a any number I'm just giving it a 2800 and use the dynamic dynamic means if the machine does not require that total 2800 MB of RAM it will reduce it and it will use maybe uh, 800 MB or 1 gig or uh, 1.5 gig it's a dynamic that means it can uh, go up and down so that's a good feature because if your machine in a like if your machines are idle that means you at the time the machine can uh, reduce their memory and they can uh, work with like 800 MB or th that's the way you can make more more machines in your environment or also I'm using a uh, SSD in my environment that's why it is very good for if you have a less memory you using a, a SSD that means you will get a very good and quick speed now we have created the switch now you can see the Cisco 192 series appear here if we haven't created the switch you will see the, here the new switch will be appear so I'm just getting it connected with the Cisco 192 series clicking on next and here it's a uh, saying me the disk space I say you make it as a 127 because it's a dynamic disk the dynamic means uh, if you have a fixed size disk fixed size disk means like if you created it with a 40 GB or 50 GB that means it will remain the same uh, you cannot extend that but the dynamically expanding means if you have created a 127 GB of uh, hard drive it will not consume that space on your physical drive which means if you are putting a data of 2 or 3 GB it will consume only a 3 GB from your physical drive it will grow uh, slowly slowly when you keep putting the data inside it it will grow slowly slowly and it will grow up to 127 but if you have a only 10 GB of data inside it the space you can grow up to 20, 127 gigabyte but the uh, if you have a 10 GB inside it only the consumable uh, space of your physical hard drive will be only a 10 GB that's why I'm going with the 127 gigabyte that, and now you have an option uh, you want with the network boot installation or you want a CD or bootable CD like uh, if I check with the install and operating system from a bootable CD or DVD you have to select the ISO image file or and if you want to do it with the network base like you have a DHCP server and WDS is configured then you can do with this option I'm going with the image and let me open if you have a, a, a server image created as a uh, bootable like as a UEFI that means you can go and do with the uh, generation 2 machine right now I'm doing it as a generation 1 uh, there's not a much difference between the speed of generation 1 and 2 but they has some more uh, good feature inside it I clicked on next and finished now it's creating my disk and creating my all the features and it is in a off state now if I click on start and click on connect now you can see it's booting up now it's loading files I maximize it, it says booting the f okay let me minimize it once 
it's running and now it's assigned memories 2800 and if you see from here you can turn off the machine you can sh shut it down you can save save means if I click on save state the machine will be saved in that particular state I'll show you what does that mean exactly because uh, the what in the state of a machine will be there and it will be saved as it is so I have saved this machine if I say connect th that means it's it, it will show you that it will say it is turned off but it is in a save state save means the memory is released state is saved and memory is released you can see assign memory there is no memory that means if you save the machine if you have a multiple machine three or four machines and you want like you know, some more memory you can just save one machine that state is not going to lose uh, there and you can utilize that memory with another machine if I click on start that's restoring and it's quickly restored it restored and if I see connect and this see the state is there it's not restarted again it has the same state where it was and for example if I want to uh, make uh, a disk like if uh, I want to make uh, one more hard drive and I want to attach with this uh, machine I want to attach with this virtual machine one more hard drive right now I have created only a one then what I can do I can create one more hard drive and there are uh, several ways you can just uh, go with uh, machine settings if you go with the machine settings right now it's a generation one so see here hardware all the options are locked there and you cannot edit or do anything you have to just shut down the machine and then you have to uh, add uh, another hard drive the boot feature is like BIOS as a boot and you cannot uh, use the encryption like secure boot you cannot use that this is a memory you can just increase or decrease like uh, what kind of a memory the virtual memory of the computer will be utilized by the virtual machine you have a processor if you are running a uh, like multiple core processor you can increase if you have a four four core processor you can increase the processor one two or three this is my hard drive this is a CD drive this is a network drive you can all add the hard drives you can add a SCSI drive you can add network adapters and here it is checkpoints I'll show you the checkpoints uh, we will just do that later let me go and install it and by the meantime let's go and create one more hard drive I'll attach this once you can what you can do either you can turn off the machine and click on add new hard drive and that will be attached with that uh, virtual machine or you can just do a new hard drive and later on you can attach it attach with the virtual machine so let me create the new hard drive and VHD VHD is a older format used in 2008 server and after in the 2012 server we got the VHDX format but if you have a VHD and you're uh, running a Hyper-V inside your uh, 2012 or 2016 server they are going to work they will read it but the new feature is VHDX and it's a newly feature that VHD set is a new feature introduced in Windows Server 2016 this format is for shared virtual hard disk only and it enables the backup of virtual machine group using shared virtual hard disk and it's not supported in operating system earlier than Windows 7 this is a new feature we got in a Windows 2016 and I uh, already explained you about the fixed disk that means you cannot change the size of this disk dynamic dynamically expanding disk means that you can uh, it will grow uh, automatically differencing disk differencing disk means uh, you want uh, a machine like you have a operating system hard disk there 
and you don't want to make some changes to it you that means it should have a parent relationship that means you created a new hard drive and all the changes you want to do on that and you don't want the parent disk to be untouched so you have to create a differencing disk and that will be linked to a parent disk and location let me choose the location I'll choose the location D drive I'll say my fresh hard drive okay I'm taking it as a 127 GB because I want to show you it will not take my 127 GB it will only take 4 MB fresh hard drive if you see the size of this drive it's only 4 MB that means uh, right now it's not consuming all 127 GB but if you put the data of 50 GB inside it it will grow and become a 50 GB it will grow until it reach 127 GB that's the um, benefit of creating a dynamically expanding disk and now the disk is created I can attach this disk with my this Windows server and by the mean I I think if I have one more virtual machine inside it I will just do one thing I will create one virtual machine and will put the existing I'll, I'm creating the virtual machine if you have already a hard drive for a previous created machine you can just link that to a new one I'm creating uh, VM2 to store the virtual machine in a different location okay I'm going to go with the C VM2 next right now I'm selecting generation 2 next okay 1 GB is fine connect with this use the existing virtual hard disk that means if you already created the disk like you have a, a virtual machine running earlier and you have deleted uh, it with this panel you have deleted it from this panel and you want to create it again you can just use a existing disk which has an operating system installed in it so if I see if I have this and uh, let's see if we are able to boot that or not okay we are able to boot that this is a uh, generation 2 machine if I go to the setting of this machine it's running and I go to the hard drive you can see here now we have a feature to edit now I can click on next is it says expand or shrink I want to expand it uh, the current size is 5 I want to expand it to a 6 GB I'll say next and finish now if you again click on edit next expand now it is current size is 6 and you want to expand it with 7 it's a running state machine and I can expand my disk this is the difference between the uh, disk like uh, this is the difference between the generation 1 and generation 2 and you have see the boot is firmware it's boot boot mgfw.efi it's not booting from a BIOS and you have a secure boot option here right now the machine is running otherwise you can enable or disable this and you have a SCSI controller hard drive is a SCSI controller it's not a IDI because if you see in uh, what this machine if you see the setting of this machine if you see hard drive is that is IDE but in generation 2 it is SCSI now let's see uh, how you can take a snapshot of your 
machine you can just right click on the machine and click on checkpoint it will take a snapshot of your current state of your machine it's uh, right now creating a snap creating a checkpoint here but it's uh, similar to a snapshot so now it is created and if you want some time like later on you want to revert that back you can just uh, click on the machine that's a client to machine and just right click uh, and click on apply and applying this will create another checkpoint for this current state right now the right now the what is the current state will be the right now it will create a new checkpoint for that and you can just click on apply and also you can export the machine if you want this machine to be exported you can just click uh, right click and you can just export this machine and you can transfer this machine to a, a another machine you can just click on export and you can just uh, locate the path and this machine will be exported to it now let's see the migration the live migration I have a server 2 running a 3 machine here already I migrated one machine here and let me try to migrate this one as well and I will make the server 1 empty okay I will move this machine to a server 2 and this will be live migration because you can see here the machine is in a running state and I want to move the virtual machine and the second option is for the storage only to move the virtual machine storage but now we are moving a complete machine uh, we're moving it to a server 2 and I'll select the server 2 and okay next move the machine data to the single location or to the different location or move the virtual hard drive only but I will move the complete with a single location click on next I want to specify the path for this I'll select see here uh, if you see the path is for a server 02 that is a member server and I'll say server client exported or now I'll select the server exported here and select the option click on next finish and I hope it will give me one error specify the virtual switch you want to use for server 2 I want to use the Cisco switch and I hope it will go through with this and now it's performing the move and right now we have a VM1 running in our server 1 and once this move is performed our this machine will be migrated to the server 2 and that will be a live migration means this uh, machine is running so friends if you like the video please do subscribe for the video and if you have any disconnect on this video you can just comment me and I will reply you with the comment or any other video you want me to create for you you can just comment me or email me and I'll create that video for you.